Hello and welcome back to The Great Cricketer. 24 hours, in fact, less than 24 hours after one of the most heroic test match ends I've ever seen. Courageous solar panel Pat, our courageous captain leading the charge on climate change by contributing to climate change, by flying over to England and taking Australia 1-0 up in the Ashes series. Oh my God, that was an absolute treat to be there. Pez, this episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com.au for all your swimwear needs. Summer is here. It means party shirts, uh, party shirts. Yeah, well, and that shirts. too you know depends what? on the quality and of a couple, it. A couple of party shut the beds. Uh, party shirts, it means no hat, no play kind of weather. It skies out, thighs out stuff. This is all brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. Head to budgiesmuggler.com.au and use the code Good Areas. all one word, Good Areas. For free shipping, and that is valid. That, that's uh, valid in both the UK and Australia. If you're in Australia, budgiesmuggler.com.au. If you're not, budgiesmuggler.com. Pez, um, we are in Manchester right now. Uh, we've taken our little roadshow north of Birmingham. We've been in Birmingham for the last five or six days, and we saw every ball of that test match, and it was a fucking pleasure. It was a pleasure to be there. I, I said before the game, he goes, it was going to be a referendum on the truths of cricket. You know, on, on the one hand, ball on the deck, get yourself in, hit your areas, grippers, gully, catching cover, a couple of dots on the boundary. Uh, you know, not, not magic shows, bombing, umbrella fields, you know, uh, straight hit, strangely behind the bowler's arm, uh, you know, piss on fingers stuff. The, you know, this this was... This was tortoise in the hair, and I'm fucking, I'm all about the hair stuff, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, wait, tortoise. Uh, you know, t- t- test cricket is tortoise stuff, he goes. Like, I- I- I've always said it. Purity, history, convention, orthodoxy wins. And there's still four tests to go. Uh, and I probably <laughs> think England plays a pretty good cricket. Um, <laughs> reckless at times, but, you know, win some, lose some. Uh, it was it was, it was was incredible to be there. It felt special to be there. Memories that we'll treasure. Don't even know how we skin this cat, this mm-hmm. podcast, because mm-hmm. there's so many ways to skin this right. goddamn cat. But why don't we just skin it every which way? Um, so we're going to go through sort of reflections 24 hours after the event. We're going to talk about like where this one ranks for us mm. personally and just generally the Australian cricket um, diaspora, not mm. just cricket, the mm. diaspora. Okay. Um, and we're, we'll obviously be assessing the game, and they'll ask what where to now before we get into the women's ashes. Um, Pez, uh, I just want to give a shout out to our patrons who have got the the audio uh, exclusively to the Patreon feed. It's patreon.com forward slash great cricket. You can uh, sign up for five or ten dollars a month, um, US, and uh, and then it just sort of uh, drops into the old. Uh, into your old uh, audio feed there, and you can listen to our reactions after every day's play of this Ashes series. We're obviously in, in Manchester now. We'll be in the UK for the first two test matches before we head home. But um, uh, And this trip probably wouldn't be possible without our friends at Patreon, with, with, literally with our patrons. So um, uh, there's just value deluxe there. And we've been seeing them. We obviously had live shows in uh, in Birmingham. We had uh, Glenn Maxwell first night. We had Ian Bell the second night. Um, and then we've got, uh, we got Phil Salt tomorrow night before we head to uh, London where we got Ricky... Uh, Graham and Michael uh, for the final t- uh, final three shows there of the trip, uh, but we need an announcement for a Leeds show because there's a change of lineup. That's right. After uh, our Manchester show, we head further north to Leeds. Uh, those who are coming to the Leeds show, and there are st- still some tickets available, need to know that uh, Steve Harmison had to pull out of our show. Uh, I understand his kid uh, has a county cricket game that Steve wants to be involved in as well, not as a player, I, I believe, as a parent. <laughs> I think it's under 15. Yeah, so. that, that would be news. Uh, that would be real news. But um, to, to Steve's immense credit, he's replaced him um, immediately with uh, uh, Ryan Sidebottom. Mm-hmm. Colourful character, great salad. He's yeah. going to be coming stories to everywhere. Leeds. Stories deluxe, yeah. Ryan Sidebottom. So he'll be our guest at Leeds. Uh, as we said, still a couple of tickets available there. We're sorry that Harmy can't be there. Uh, our hands are tied in it. He just let us know that uh, because of the news with his... Um, with his son, that uh, he he wanted to be there for that, and uh, you can't, um, uh, you know. I mean, look, this with this test match, you know, there's some really cool stories about Pat Cummins and his dad knocking around as well. So you know, um, f- you know, full encouragement to Harmy there. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've got Ryan side bottom, and uh, looking forward to seeing him. Um, now there are there are zero tickets. In fact, I lied. There's there's uh, Ali Pally have put on a couple more tickets oh, for um, for Punter for, for Ponting on Sunday night. That's Sunday coming um, at Alexandra Palace uh, with our guest, our dear close personal friend Ricky Ponting. Ali Pally have put on a few extra tickets. There are tickets only about- for, only forty or so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm going to get into that in a second. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
Uh, you can go to greatcricketer.com forward slash live dash shows. You can just go to greatcricketer.com and figure out for yourself. That's right. It just says live <laughs> shows in a tab there. Just see it, click it, yeah. and you're there. Incredible incredible scenes. People emailing us who must have gone to the website to get the email asking, where do I, sit, where do I get the tickets from? Yeah. Have a guess. Um, also, at the Please moment... Come. Right now, at this second, there are 12 tickets available for Manchester. Again, the venue's put on a handful of extra tickets, uh, made them available. Now, we've just done another Instagram post, so they may be gone. But if mm. you are in Manchester, uh, and if you're in Leeds, and if you're in London, and you're desperate, if you're having a look at this Ashes and thinking, I'm getting 05 vibes, and I want to be around it, I want to mm. be in and around it, I want to be up and about, greatcricketer.com. If you want to get behind TGC, uh, we really uh, appreciate our, the, the, the support for our patrons. That's patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. Okay. Um, just some reflections, Pez. I mean, you, you, you mentioned before uh, Ponting Singh where he said uh, after, after Kevin Peterson was basically sucking off Joe Root's mm. wonderful 46 yeah. uh, and Ricky Ponting on commentary at the, at the tea or the lunch break at the, at the interval anyway on Sky snapped his head and just said, well, he's out now and he got 40 uh, in one of the most pure sense. Now, in my reflections of the game, that also sort of does sync up with how I feel about baseball just a little bit. You know, it's like, hey, it's all well and good, but oh, yeah, we won. You know, we also invented a segment uh, called... Um, What's given you crow's feet throughout the Ashes? Well, that's the most famous thing to emerge from that's, the last six or seven that's days in cricket remember. discourse, I, <laughs> that's I, I what believe. That's people remember. Because the Ponting thing was good. Like, the, the reason why, part of the reason I think why that Ponting KP exchange is so funny is because, like, in 11 seconds it manages to, like, trap and capture the entire discourse mm -hmm. of this Ashes. You know, like, triumphalist um, English hyperbole. Well, that's what I was going to say. Right, sorry. Yeah, so, no, no, that's fine. No, so that's what I was going to say, because, like, we, with the, with the what's give you, what gives you crow's feet, one of the ones we had during the, uh, during the match uh, at the end of the day's play for the Daily Reviews, um, we were saying, like, well, no one's figured this out. And if someone's told you that they've figured it out, just like, well, you need to just bump them, or you just need to do this, or you need to change these fields. There's 140 years of test cricket, and that's what I respect and know, and there's history and there's research about how to win games of cricket, circumstance, uh, happenstance, romance. Uh, that's <laughs> other answers. Okay. Ants in me pants. <laughs> I heard that yesterday. <laughs> but like, bed bugs at the Airbnb. But, but there's, there's 12 months of research for whatever the fuck England are playing at the moment, often coined, coined basball. Now, this must be a little bit in the same way that when Galileo first discovered that, you know, the Earth revolves around the sun as opposed to the other way around. No one knows what the fuck is going on. It's changed everything. But, so I'm torn a bit like, well, I think England played some really good cricket. But at the same time, well, he's out and he got 40. So, you know, I'm kind of having a bit, of, bit each way, you know? Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I like, uh, you, you, I mean, do, do, how, how do you want to do this? Do you want to, do you want to get into just like uh, pretending we're assessing baseball now? Like uh, now that Australia's won really narrowly. Mm. Uh, narrowly you, Meadows. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it goes without saying, but it needs to be said anyway. Because <laughs> um, from like, uh, you know, 24 hours after the fact, uh, the things that are sitting with me are firstly around fandom, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the fan experience of it being online. Mm -hmm. uh, we are um, a centrifugal force for a lot of reaction. Uh, and like what, watching the game yesterday, uh, I can only imagine what it must have been like in Australia at your at your twos, at your three a.m.s, at your four a.m.s, oh, worrying God. about work, like the. Uh, they're like, I know we watched the highlights after the day's play. So we, we went to like the most dire pub of all time, obviously, to <laughs> yeah, continue yeah. the circuit that we didn't want, our bodies <laughs> didn't want, but our minds needed <laughs> and and took in the highlights. And I just yeah. also noticed that like just some something about the colour palette of Sky Sports, it like mm. somehow amplifies the... Mm. The, the English grey, you know, of Birmingham. A couple of guys knocking around in sleeveless sweaters. I love a sweater. Uh, and, like, I just think when you're, like, lying on your couch, maybe with a blanket over you, waking up and not, mm. and, like, and, and there's, a, there's a tense run chase going on. Maybe you've got a cup of tea in Australia. Mm. Like, the, the greyness of the English skies, uh, a fading light adds to the tension. Like, yes. add, you know, and the sounds of the hollies, which we'll get to mm. in a second. So I can only imagine what that experience was like as Australia neared it. People must have been falling asleep. Uh, particularly because it was like, well, you know, it wasn't looking good for, for, for the main, right, I, I right, have right. to say. Like, if people are saying they believe for the whole time, good luck to them. But mm. I reckon most of us were like, 
seen this movie before. Yeah. Australia don't make 280 in this fourth innings chase, and they too literally many. haven't made that many since 1948 right. in an Ashes game, right? So mm-hmm. uh, we, we, we didn't have any kind of like a muscle memory of like, no, this 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 can happen. Uh, but like, so, so as we watched yesterday, I, I felt like I was, like I just felt the sense of dread all day. Uh, happy to tell anybody who was listening that 280 was too many, yeah. and you and you were the same. We were basically mm. like um, in something approaching like a, a a mix between like a fetal position at our desk in the press box, as well as um, the position you take up at like a uni lecture when you are sleeping through it, where you basically <laughs> just yeah, your head is on the desk, yeah, 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 your, yeah. your forehead is on yeah. your forearms, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. peek out every so often. Yeah, that that was about us in the back corner of the press box. I thought we were going to experience like the the absolute nadir of our sporting fandom, you yeah. know, where like it's not only like losing, but like losing in this slow, torturous way over five days, uh, you know, like in England, like in the belly of the thickest smarm imaginable for an Australian. And I include like... You know, everybody in the crowd, all the English in the crowd, up in the press box, like that, you could feel the vibration of a uh, incoming like English glory, and which yeah. which was supplemented by uh, how much excitement there was for the way they played cricket over five days, which is not misplaced, by the way. Uh, and it went so, so for it to go from there to the like absolute peaks of euphoria mm. available mm. in cricket uh, in human consciousness. You know, was like just, uh, it was just the most exhilarating thing. Like we shared a silent, aggressive hug in the press box. Like I felt the ripples of your muscles and the tenderness <laughs> of your heart all at once yeah. uh, while trying not to make a sound out of respect professional respect for our colleagues but i yeah. probably smashed you sort of physically as in with my hand I've got some, uh, like, that was later I've, I've got some bruising yeah that's right and like yeah. other things were happening where we we're like uh, aussie journals were walking past and you know i was like leaning over like like you know sort of really privately like whispering yes yeah, yeah. you know uh and uh and then yeah we like called on the um we went and did our our daily uh lots of people yelling out lots of rugby league jerseys knocking around lots of fists being uh pumped at each other and um the english had gone i don't know where they went but um and and in fact i want to say like just to share a little anecdote without anyone being named but like that just just to illustrate the point and people would not listening to this like there was a point about halfway through the day where it must have been Kerry who got out or something like that maybe a little bit later and i went to go to the bathroom and um uh, i'm going to say an ecb official Mm. leaned over as i was walking taking the path to the bathroom and said um uh, you know, flashing the toothy grin, not trying to sneak out early, are you? With a <laughs> wink. Didn't say anything. Uh, couldn't find him after, I just couldn't find him after a day's play. I'm just, I'm just leaving now. Is that, is that all good? Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Like, but, that uh, might, but that man dad died 30 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, and, and we, um, uh, I'm sure you'll come to this later, but yeah, like we, we, we called on the visceral minutes last night and actually yeah. like um, 90% of them were um, were like, extremely aggressive very many, aggressive many beyond the point of being publishable <laughs> uh like, and and like oh mm. i'm gonna say like not funny but like 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 without any kind of redeeming uh yeah, cleverness no, to no, it no it sense was, of irony or yeah yeah, yeah. and i just self-awareness I just want to like riff on that a little bit if that's all right just talking about edge baston yeah like, yeah yeah that i i do think with those um hu- humorless anger full visceral minutes most of them from aussies uh, where sixty five percent of them were swear words, um, like that. I thought that was possibly a bit of the effect of Edge Baston and colonization. But like, it, it was like Edge Baston was a sensational atmosphere, tremendous noise. Uh, the connection between the players and the fans is mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. There, uh, five days sold out. People engaged in the game. They do get the England team wickets. I thought Australian guys took the gas at different times with some of the atmosphere that was being generated. Um, it's just, it's just that you know, as good as the noise is, mm. they're just a bit self-satisfied. The Edge Baston <laughs> faithful, wouldn't you say? Like they're they're, they're very yeah. into themselves, like about how good they are, and the commentators. Uh, amplify it. Gee, it's good here. Gee, it's good. I mean, how many fucking pats on the back do you need? Do you know what I mean? Like, so it makes me understand why yeah. Tim Payne reacted the way they did a few years ago. That's eight years without a test win in Edgbaston, by the way, mm. uh, for England. Um, you know, like, they, they, and and they spend, and, and you know, this this is like, um, 
uh, you know, we're from tall, tall poppy Australia. No one's good at anything. Uh, I, I just think, like, the, the, the crowd spends a lot of time antagonising the Aussies, and that's fine. Like, that rolls both ways. Back in Australia, we're crass, way less melodic. Um, we just don't seem to need the pat on the back as much. You know what I mean? Like, every, every, ground, every ground doesn't, doesn't go, gee, 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 it's tough here. Gee, it's tough here. So I just think against that backdrop, um, where there was five days of it, mm. uh, th- there's just an absolute avalanche of Aussies who are like giddy to explode with their own aggressive emotions, especially when you're experiencing the sound of the hollies and everything at 3 a.m. in Australia. Um, we, we, we get the general edge bast and suck off for five days, bleary eyed, mm. anxious about losing sleep. So to like the, to pit them at the fucking post, yeah. at the post, like after the literal and figurative trumpets of English glory, you're going to swear a bit, <laughs> you know, that's well, all. Well, Thanks gr- for that. Well, good, new- good news is, um, we're about to get sucked off about the slope at Lords. Um, <laughs> so, you know, pats on the back about mm. the edge bastion crowd and rightfully so. And also the slope at Lords, uh, mm. the, the, it's coming up. the, <laughs> the famous double, double, they call mm. it. Um, well let's, um, I think now's a good moment then to, uh, to listen to the speed pipes we've had, uh, we've had in, obviously we can't react to it. We can't hear it because uh, a little behind the scenes stuff, a little BTS, uh, we don't have a mixer here. Um, so we can't react to it, but you're going to hear them right now on the audio so here it is thanks to everyone who uh who left who left uh who, who left the ground thanks for everyone who <laughs> left the ground uh who left to speak pipe there and for getting in touch so to that end pez um i thought for a long time it was going to be well i'd like to see them do it against nisa and stark mm. um but it turns out i would still like to see them do it against our boys and we did uh we did for a bit but uh we're, we're going to talk about like where this one ranks uh, I I uh, I noted after day five, like just just in my lifetimes, the ones that came to mind for me were Australia West Indies 1992, Craig McDermott gloves one down to uh, to the wicketkeeper who I can't think of right now, off Courtney Walsh, um, Dujon possibly, possibly Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dujon, Dujon. Um, there was there was that one a couple of years later. My first test match I ever went to was Australia and South Africa at the uh, at the SCG. I think they were chasing like one twenty. Mm. Damien Martin, the set batsman, chips one to cover. Doesn't play test cricket again for six years. Australia lose that game. England and Australia edge bats in 05. Flintoff does his thing. We also get a great photo with him and Brett Lee. Uh, Headingley two thousand nine. Stokes does his thing. India at the Gabba in twenty twenty one. A lot of these ones in recent memory. I know, like, Australia has won close games before, like, notably, Mitchell Johnson bowls Graham Smith at the SCG through the gate. Mm. You know, Michael Clark takes six wickets uh, in a... No, he takes, like, three and, a, three and an over or something yeah. against India as well. There, there has been times Pat where Australia... Pat Cummins in his first test hit the winning run yep, straight down good against shout, South Africa. Good shout. But, you know, I suppose I remember the pain, as we all do as sports fans, generally speaking. But um, just this kind of game against England, in England, I've just, like, I've never seen... Yep. I, 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 Pez mentioned before that we were just completely pessimistic throughout the day. Well, I don't even know it was pessimism. It was just the, it was just the uh, recoil of history in my bones that was mm. just like, I've just seen this one before. Like, I've seen Broad do the thing, gets the arms going. There's one play and miss. Everyone's batting perfectly. There's a play and miss. All of a sudden, the, ho- the holy starts making noise, and it's like, this is the hardest pitch that anyone's ever had to bat on. Mm. Like, no one's ever done this before. 280 runs. Never seen it before in my life in any innings in any game. Um, and we were just walking around the, 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 the press office, the, 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 um, the, what was it? Media center, like, uh, like fucking Pac-Man just walking around just going, it's too many. It's too many. It's too much. It's too much. It's not enough. Bumping into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a fucking Roomba. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He got stuck a few times. I just, I had to turn him. <laughs> I just, just, just to change the batteries. Bopping his head in the wall going, it's too many. It's too many. It's too many. <laughs> didn't make any yeah. eye contact with anyone for two and a <laughs> half hours. That's right. Is he okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's with me. He's with me. <laughs> so where this one ranks, you know, I, uh. I just I feel extremely happy for the captain for the side. There's just there's just so much bullshit that they put up with all the time, um, from legends of the game that I still love and respect and adore. But like some of it is just so much fucking bullshit. And the fact that the captain does it um, in their own way in the first time they've come against this style of cricket and England were broadly speaking, apart from I guess really in the field they were fantastic. You know on a pretty shit deck. Stokes' captaincy, I think, and, and the way England play makes the deck less of an issue. But it was a fucking dog shit pitch. And mm. I think both teams said that. It's not just me complaining. Um, so where it, I don't know where it ranks. Like, I, I, Is it podium? I don't know. I mean, right now, just us being there, the privilege of being there and seeing it um, was fucking visceral. So, yeah, it's the best game of any sport I've ever seen. There you go. It's uh, and I, I mean it as a compliment to 
to England. Yes. Uh, I, I think England is still going to be very formidable for the rest of these Ashes. Yeah, and I also I think that um, Basball or whatever you want to fucking call it is um, it, it is a good chance of being a winning strategy. Uh, and against that backdrop and the general difficulty of winning a game of cricket away against one of the big sides, yeah. like I, I think it's one of the greatest Test wins I've ever seen. Uh, uh, from an Australian team, yep. Uh, it, it may be the best uh, for me, p- p- possibly because uh, we had the privilege of being there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason why it's so special uh, is that, like, I, I can't remember a time in my life when Australia has managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Yes. Uh, like, it, I, it isn't hyperbolic to say that uh, we we struggle to win the closed ones. Um, yep. That and and that's not. Insignificant. Like I, I think when there's a pattern of close losses or close wins in any side in er- any area of life beyond sport, you know, exams, uh, relationships. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, the do, amount of times I've snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Cooking, you know, <laughs> doing the dishes, <laughs> Pick, picking up the kids' toys off the floor, you know. <laughs> Mate, the amount of times I've been in a nightclub at 3am, yeah. I can't go home alone and I snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm getting a cab after, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Getting Uber X. Once, once, you, once there's a pattern <laughs> there, you you move past coincidence and into the realm of what it reveals about the character of mm. a team uh, or of the people within the team. And I think it's fair to say that at least in our lifetime, Australia's never been comfortable when a team runs them close, like they've been in Test match cricket, right? White ball cricket is different. Uh, but but they, they've been a team that likes to get ahead. Then they crush you, you know, forcing yep. surrender. So when teams run them close, I've always felt it panicked Australia, like as their mode of victory had always been challenged. Australia are uh, front runners, right? Australia, that, Australia, right. Gabba, bat first, six hundred yep. totally. games that, over. That's the that's the game style. Yeah. So I uh, feel good about it for Australia's captain to reverse the trend in the game, which, yeah. like, let's face it, that was one where England. England, I felt, were, would pull ahead mm. and then Australia would just pull them back. Yep. Uh, I thought that spoke to something extraordinary and it did reverse history, you know, what, what we normally see. Uh, and 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 now, so now we're into some common stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, uh, like he's, he's there with his dad. His dad, imagine doing that in front of your dad. Like, God. tough time for the family. Uh, sure. Imagine doing it in front of your dad. They go to see Springsteen on night one. Oh, what a mate, week, mate! Like, Sp- you know, Springsteen's all about using his coarse hands to work. You know, to make a living. Mm. You know, like doing it right, doing it real, being rootsy and earthy. Mm-hmm. And our and our skipper's there taking his dad. Yeah, you know what Springsteen just after England and piled on three ninety. Mm. You know, and declared, and Camo's out there just watching the boss yeah. go about it. I'm just thinking, like, and then and now, and now I'm starting to think about some emotional family stuff with him and Springsteen while he's doing that innings, probably adding a layer of emotion that is completely at odds with what he was doing, which was just cool and calm and collected. But, you know, I think when your team wins, you can just add your own narrative to suck yourself off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah cool, of course. Yeah. Uh, and when Springsteen came out for his encore, everyone was chanting for Joe Root to come back out. Yeah, that, and that's <laughs> it. It was, it, was, it was giving Pat nightmares. It was, he actually wishes he didn't go. You know, is he here? Where is he? I can't get away from this coat. Um, but, uh, you know, what, what like... What a game! It it finished at seven twenty two p.m. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. day five. Yeah, you know it used nearly every single ball that was available to it. Uh, How many overs left? Maybe four, five. It, I think seven overs left. Was it as many as that? Yeah, I think oh, so. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, I'm lugging heaps in the bank. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Could have chased three thirty. And. Uh, and so yeah, it was. Uh, look, I I don't know where you meant to put it. Like, um, mm. um, but but, uh, and I think it will probably grab some context depending on what happens in the series. But uh, in and of itself, uh, it was. It, I'm, I'm going to say actually, it's the best test match I've ever seen um, from Australia that I've ever been at. Uh, Definitely and, for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, maybe may, may maybe even higher. Do you reckon we'll do DVDs about it and shit though? Like, do you think because well, you know, there's going to well, be a lot of Headingley Edge bastard and stuff? That's, that's, like this. that's the funny stuff, isn't it, mate? Like, I, I've obviously you wake up the next day and you see this, you see Australia's reaction, you know, from you know the what's happened overnight, and I still feel like Australians are like, fuck yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, but they're not planning like to separate fucking George Street and Pitt Street so they can get <laughs> like a fucking ticket take parade, are they? Like, it's just it's just like Australia's one, fucking yeah. you beauties, hey, yeah, we yeah. we we've, we've beaten the old foe there. That's right. But I don't feel like. 
it's gone over the top. I don't yeah. know how much we'll even talk about this one because again, we've been sleeping during it. I mean, yeah. the fact that no one even very few people would have would have stayed up for it really. I think yeah. because the first session was washed out. The first session prime time in Australia in the Eastern States, eight o'clock kickoff. Um, but you know, it has been wrapped up with um, Origin two. Uh, so people had the night before, yeah. the night after uh, was the most sort of main event of the week. Of course, um, but, uh, but what, I mean, what what a, what a week for Australian cricket in between, you know, Rusty's innings uh, <laughs> on Bluey. <laughs> you know, I've watched it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, what, 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 what did no, you think well, I it? think we should talk about it on Patreon. We'll talk well. about it on Patreon, yeah, because yeah, so, we're raising it on Patreon. So, so okay. we'll, do, we'll do hashtag Ask Fridays yeah. tomorrow yeah. Um, before our live show in Manchester. Uh, so we, I Where were you on a tears spectrum? Just, just, to, just to tease it for people who might want to join Patreon for the loosest, darkest analysis <laughs> of an Ashes game you're ever going to hear. Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, uh, look, look. Firstly, where were you on the tier spectrum? Anything like from from a maybe a lump in the nah, throat up to no? Nah, nah, okay, nah. okay. Well, no, but no, but you but you know my you know my emotional retardation. Is, oh yeah, of <laughs> yeah. course. Oh yeah, you're retarded. That's right. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> how could I forget? <laughs> no, I mean like the only thing that gets me going is soldiers coming home from war. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I saw one of them um, yeah. after a big night we had a few days ago as well. <laughs> It was an English dad and his son seen his son seen him and I've just got off the phone talking yeah. to my kids uh, and I'm yeah, like yeah. you saw me right? and yeah. I'm like I do I do <laughs> not need that I don't I can't need do that. it can't do it I will oh, and, say and the other thing is if a, if a pitch in India is no good oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> there's two things two that make things, me cry yeah that's right <laughs> and one of them quite a lot. <laughs> More and more and more. Soldiers going home from war and a, and a dog shit, a shit tip in India. It's like an indoor day too. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. One, I'll go one, one BTS that was uh, is is pretty cool, and I was usually going to hate it because uh, it's it's too tribal. But um, um, post, but we're, we're going to talk about all this BTS shit on um on on Patreon because a lot there's a lot going on. But um, uh. After the game, um, we, we we did our daily and he goes, went to uh, edit it upstairs. And so I, um, you know, standing there, sitting there holding my dick, uh, which which was, um, <laughs> was very lucky I wasn't seen. But um, <laughs> figure of speech. Uh, I popped, in, I popped into the, um, I popped into the England press conference uh, to watch Ben Stokes speak. Firstly, I haven't even really heard him speak that much before. Probably says more about my own research. Mm. Uh, lovely, lovely accent, uh, to be honest. But um, uh, he, and he spoke with the um, customary kind of uh, like perspective uh, that you are expecting from the Basball era guys. A lot, of, a lot of dignity. Yeah, like talk, he was he was talking about how there's kids downstairs in the dressing room who are wearing England shirts who weren't wearing them before, and we're happy with how we played, but there's a couple of areas we didn't get right. Uh, he he spoke really beautifully about. How he dropped that catch off um, Nathan Lyon and um, deliberately, uh, <laughs> and and because he saw, he got an no nah, guts, <laughs> he saw someone with a full jumper in the crowd. And okay, that's the message. I got to drop this um, pocket in heaps. Uh, I mean that catch that would have been a worldie. Well, yeah. we will talk about the game in a second, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also he to to his credit he mentioned that you know it didn't escape him that. In Headingley, you know, Nathan Lyon dropped the ball and Stokes hit the winning runs. And now here at Edgebaston, uh, you know, where, where Cummins in Headingley had bowled the last ball for Stokes to dispatch. This time around, Stokes drops the catch and Cummins and Lyon are at the crease. Mm. Uh, and he says it's mad how what goes around comes around. So that was cool of him to call that out. Mm. Maybe just getting in first, actually. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like some press might turn on the boys. Uh, anyway, um, mm. anyway, and look, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to labour this too much other than to say... Uh, I don't know, I just hung around for a minute or two afterwards and I was walking out and uh, had to walk past the lift and Stokes happened to just be standing at the lift, like full whites, English cap on, a couple of um, officials and minders around him and uh, he like pulled himself away from the group as the lift door was opening, which was being held for him to um, to stop me. He goes, the great cricketer. And like, and he and he shook my hand. I said, "Oh, get it, mate!" Oh, fucking awesome. Shook my hand, and obviously, absolutely swallowed my hand. I haven't seen it since. Um, tickling me elbow, tickling me neck, scratching me neck, uh, and and gripped it hard. So his wrist yeah. is okay. If anyone's worried about that, but yeah. um, and he and he said, "Oh, mate, love love the videos." And I'm just like, 
oh, thanks, brother. I'm like, commiserations on the defeat because oh, it doesn't matter. Like, well, like, love the content. So the news is he actually says it doesn't matter. Uh, the yeah, loss yeah, yeah, in the yeah, game. Yeah. But that, that was like, <laughs> that was, um, yeah, that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, uh, I mean, wouldn't mind a follow from him, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was very cool of him to do that in that situation. Right, right. Uh, right. And it's actually, it's actually a real shame just vis a vis sledging him as well because yeah, yeah. he's, he's done something Well, like, nice. after he walked up to him and said, suck shit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Suck a fart, England. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a sucker ding dong <laughs> well, It's a very dignified response yeah, yeah, yeah. To a bloke who heard Fuck a sucker yeah. ding dong and he, and he said Where's the tattoo Pez Yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well That's we had right. Glenn Maxwell The other night as well And obviously Glenn and uh, Glenn's played a number of years at RCB where Coley plays and Coley says he, he watches all the time as well. Yeah. Now that's concerning. I mean, that's actually a reward for us putting Coley in every title, which is yeah, that's quite right. a challenge for this video. Coley and MS Doney win Ashes. That's, that's going to be the headline <laughs> yeah. of this one. Um, okay, let's get to the game itself. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of assessing the game. Will make, I mean, there's just so many moments in this game that we'll remember for a very long time. But uh, So Australia picked Boland over Stark. Hayeswood also in. Um, Boland, the most expensive of his career, but that was an interesting selection. Uh, it was an, it was an interesting selection from from the outset that they that they played that lineup of Cummins, Boland, and Hazelwood, obviously with Lyon and Green. Um, but that's the way they went, and then England won the toss and they batted, which is very rare for them when you think about what they've done over the past twelve months. They've 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 put, they've um, preferred to chase, haven't they? But the the wicket was fucking flat on day one, and that would sort of want to come to the first thing of the criticism of Cummins. Um, field placements yep. from the outset of the game. Now that's been wide ranging, and I don't think I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever s seen anyone defending it or even challenging why they why he he set the fields that he did. So he had not in, not in the like the mainstream establishment. Like, no, I've not. I'm not, I'm not seen it, and I and I found that really surprising for me because so we were obviously there, and we I didn't consume any. I wasn't on Twitter all day. I wasn't listening. I wasn't watching the, the commentary. I wasn't doing. I wasn't doing shit, Your Honor. Um, wasn't even there. Uh, but I just thought from the outset, watching it, I was watching um, Zach Crawley walk at Cummins and Hazelwood from the first ball on one of the flattest pitches you'll ever see, slapping balls to the uh, offside, especially. And I was just thinking, like, well. You can be as you can be the best bowler of all time, and this is how they're going to play. On and on this deck, which is offering nothing and offered nothing the entire game, there was no nick, no, there were no nicks to first or second slip. There was only one catch in the gully off uh, Cameron Green took the catch off. Was that Duckett? Yeah, there were there were nicks to the keeper, sure, but I think there was a nick early on off Crawley, which bounced about two minutes in front of Steve Smith at second slip. But apart from that, there was there was no drop catches. There was nothing. I was just really really surprised the amount of conversation about. Why the fuck is Australia being so defensive when, yeah. like, England finished the day on 390 and after day one, I thought Australia were ahead because 390 for a first inning score on that deck was unders for mm. me. Um, we thought it'd be 500. See, England, looking England, at it. If, if, if Cummins kept the field up, and I don't understand why he would have done, they would have scored 500 on day one. I had no doubt about that. Me, personally, there were a couple of times when I thought they kept the second slip in too long. I thought they should have had a mid-wicket because Ollie Pope, when he came in, was dropping to the leg side and getting and turning the strike over quite easily. But, like, apart from that, and maybe, like, a couple of minor stuff, but, like, apart from that, I was really blown away at the end of the day seeing the conversation being like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I was, yeah. I was really surprised. It was uh, uh, just a, a very unfamiliar tempo yeah, to the whole yeah. thing. I understand and like, that, yeah. The, yeah. The, the underlying themes of it, though, are fucking awesome in the sense that, like, uh, you know, what's, what's being dog-whistled when Cummins puts a deep point out for ball one and has three or four out uh, after two or three overs, and even the English are getting involved. Alastair Cook's, like, uh, was saying, oh, I've never seen this before, is, is this idea of... Um, it, it, your field placements can indicate how Australian you are. That is what what Cummins was doing was un-Australian, <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. um, you know, the, like Basball was always going to uh, try and sucker the Australians into like an ideological battle. You know, there were without na needing to name commentators, there were commentators having fucking conniptions that Australia wasn't like front footing England mm. in that situation. Four Be slips, two That's gullies. right, because because front footing England in those situations is what helps us feel safe about our nationhood, you know, like our, our, our sense of uh, identity individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. And I, I, once, it, I mean, it's a, I don't think it's full vindication yet because there's five games and, and all that kind of England stuff. England played really well in this game. Yeah, that, yeah. that's right. And they could like, have won it several times over. 
it, there's there's again another like really low key win for Andrew McDonald here, you know, and Pat Cummins in that like they probably knew how our country at home would react to the defensiveness from the start. No, you know, these guys like the the Aussies and McDonald and Cummins like made these tactical decisions, um, I believe, and they've done this the whole time, like without ego and the egolessness of the Aussies, which is just so unfamiliar to everybody, it, it, I think has played a huge role in them beating England here. I think England, you know, some uh, some journalists were saying agree, to us, mate, yeah. some journalists were saying to us like, oh, England will be absolutely uh, thrilled at Australia giving them runs like this, you know? I think Australia... And I was like, I just think the absolute opposite. I think Mc, uh, McCullum and Stokes would have been hoping Australia would be uh, would be suckered into an e- like ego-based field position. Which positions. is what every team that they've beaten so far... That's right. They, they've played... Yeah, Elgar tried, was they've, talking like that and all that. They, you know, and they've exactly tried to match England. That's right. It hasn't worked. And they're like... You know, and that and that's why you know we keep repeating the line. Like to see them do it against our boys, yeah. <laughs> uh, b- because like yeah. that's that's kind of the that's the ego play that sits underneath. But it's it is the like the absolute mark of Cummins and McDonald that they play ego free cricket. But why and, do we and bump them? Yeah, exactly. But it, like yeah. that that's all we keep hearing. It's just like one yeah. like this this kind of one dimensional approach. Like th- this is like so unfamiliar because Australia has Australia has has like basketball is meant to be uh, an enlightened. Uh, like a tactical approach to the game, which asks questions of your traditionalist thinking that you can't really wriggle out of. And mm. actually for five days, I felt like it was, it was doing exactly that. But Australia has, uh, has ultimately maybe through one good innings from Cummins and Lyon, like outsmarted England. And I think the limitation of, of Basball is that uh, it only uses one tempo in a game of cricket. Like it is foot on the thro- foot on the accelerator all the time. Um, uh, but what Australia was able to do was speed the game up and slow it down. Mm. And I think that like that is going to be a real tactical feature of the next five tests is like how both teams utilize time in cricket, like time to build pressure. And and I think that is a limitation of basketball. It's just one way of using time, whereas Australia had multiple ways of using time. Uh, and, you know, for example, like going into the second test, third test, how does England play uh, if a, if a draw is brought into play? You know, can Australia slow England down so much or or, or play so slowly mm. that England are forced to go even more recklessly to allow Australia into the game? Uh, I, I just think that that's the like I think baseball is quite a good strategy and may well um, come out on top. But I do think mi- militarily speaking, it's it is one dimensional. You yeah, know, like yeah, it yeah. is. There is only one way to play, and that gives Australia an advantage. It, we know how they're going to play, and we can develop tactics and strategies around it. Uh, and then on top of that, with this game, uh, I just thought England fielded fielded very badly. I think their fielding positions were good, but their fielding was poor. You know, starting from the wicket keeper yeah. um, through to some other drop catches as well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to that end, in the first innings, um, Joe Root hit. A masterful hundred, his thirtieth Test ton. Best also came in at uh, at one seventy five for five, mm. and hit a runnable seventy eight. Yeah, now that's, that's now that's now that's another thing about the criticism of Cummins. I want to I want to highlight. It struck me that a number of people were saying like, "Well, Steve Smith's the captain," uh, you know, and and that stuff is just so fucking dumb. Right. Also. The amount of criticism Cummins was getting for his field placements, yet simultaneously, C. Smith's the captain on the field. I mean, where, like, does this stuff ever end? I mean, the fucking it's it's, it's it is moronic. It's it's mm. moronic that, that that sort of commentary. Um, anyway, um, but and and to the end of the of the tactics that were criticised, Australia did have them one seventy five for five on one of the fucking flattest pitches this mm. country's ever seen. I would I would say, mm. especially at Edgebaston. Um, but Bearso came in and batted sensationally, seventy eight run a ball. But Joe Root, fuck, he was he. I mean, he he probably is the best Test batter in the world and probably has been since you know. As you keep saying, Steve Smith touched Bradman that time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. He touched Bradman and then lost something. <laughs> and then, then lost something. Mm. Um, 30th test ton. Didn't look in trouble at any any point. You actually said to me uh, after Joe Root faced four balls, how does Joe Root not score 100 on this? I mean, it was, it, it, but, I mean, just despite the flatness of the deck, he was fantastic. Um, there's obviously some highlights in the second innings where he comes out and tries to reverse lap. Cummins first ball and plays and misses, but then executes it with Boland uh, twice in the same over. One slightly fine of Kerry, the other one just over Cameron Green. It's sort of a wide-ish third slash fourth slip. Um, 
But Joe Root, fuck, he, he, he was very, very good. He was very um, composed. It was he, he remains the best batter of the baseball era. Um, okay, second, he's, he's, he's out and he got 40. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he remains the best player that England have. Yeah, no, I I I have nothing more to say to that. I mean, I just <clears throat> speaking about the game more broadly, I I just really don't think that Australia's slow food movement or slow tempo cricket, uh, as funny as an ideological battle as it is, uh, is like necessarily vindication that like there's only you know that's the way you've got to play a test cricket yeah, sure. uh, i do think england will probably improve and i do mm-hmm. think they had the best part of the game for a long time and i think they'll they'll refine it and they'll tweak it uh to, and, and that they'll improve in a couple of those areas where they were just a bit sloppy england so i you know that's i'll, I'll probably parentheses that as one serious thing i'll say then the rest will basically be like uh sledging stuff um Lyon had four in each innings, eight for the game. He yeah, also what, a, what a game for Nathan Lyon. He also scores, we finished on 16 or 20 or something yeah, like and that. and he's also... Uh, red. Play, and also that... Oh, that, mate, that oh shot. My that God. shot he hit over Someone wide long on. Seriously, like, to take it from 11 oh. to win to 7 to win. Like, like I, I the was... Game, the game was over I, then. I, I had, like, I had, I had fucking veins popping out of my... Do you want, my do you want, do you want to describe the shot? Oh, okay. Uh, so Nathan Lyon, there's there's eleven to win. He's been in with Cummins for uh, if what feels like eighteen days. Uh, the the tension is palpable. And Stuart Broad, who's been winding up the Hollies, their best uh, bowler all game. Their best bowler all game. He had a, he had a fantastic game. Stuart Broad. Uh, you know he's got the, the he's got the headband going. The whole crowd's getting behind him, and uh, he's doing that twirly thing to wind them up. <laughs> and out and and. Basically, the run, runs had stopped mm. at this point, apart from like this the old scrunted one behind square mm. or something. Little inside edge, yeah. yeah. Broad starts attacking the stumps, and then Nathan Lyon basically picks him up over <laughs> wide mid on, like fucking Mark War. <laughs> one bounce into the fence, oh and like my from where, God. where we were watching, uh, like bec- we, we actually pretty much at straight mid on, uh, for where yeah. we were from high. And so, my, I don't know about you, but like, uh, my depth perception was struggling whether with whether that had lobbed up in the air just for a split second mm. until you realised that there was some serious velocity on yeah. it. And then we're all just like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> and it was just about then I was like, we might do this. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we were thinking about, like, I know for me, I was thinking about going out into the crowd, mm. but I was like, oh, I can't move. Like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, it's like, hey, and I know those things don't mean anything. Australia would have lost if you, had yeah. you moved. I didn't want to like... Um, close my laptop or anything like nothing could change but like none of the energy could move there was lots of lots of uh, conjecture uh, about ben Stokes's declaration at the end of the day's oh, yeah. play i suppose as it, as it's turned out um it's uh, england had every chance to win the game and and you know what probably did a couple of times over johnny best misses a stumping off cameron green when he was on zero uh who i think cameron green then made 36 38 something like that he also drops alex carey keeper up to the stumps and he misses kawaja first over of the second innings as yes, well in yes between, yes you know he does. we haven't even talked about it was he yet by the way <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 we're, yeah. we're, we're about to but uh, and then ben stokes obviously t- nearly takes one of the all-time great catches mm. in an ashes test match and yeah, then there's uh, no shame in dropping that catch no no but no of course of course it's not i'm just saying that that there are, there are having spoken to me after the game and that, that yeah <laughs> there are opp- there oh. are opportunities um stokes is actually recording this he's actually behind the camera now i pre- <laughs> appreciate appreciate you coming out to manchester <laughs> stokes you my, my close personal friend anyway um uh so you know the 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 declaration question is an interesting one in that at the time i think we all felt like mm, crow's feet like mm, what's doing here yeah um really aged myself a couple of years i was getting such like fucking like a snap mm. in my neck um, but uh, you know, England had the chance. I was saying he got crow's feet after after day one, um, w- which surprised him because he was in a Chinese restaurant and he ordered chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so someone on Patreon wrote he wanted to know if, if uh, the movie Gladiator was Russell Crowe's feet, <laughs> Russell Crowe's greatest feet. I love the, yeah that that wordplay stuff is good. Yeah, it was, I, I remember it was good like, like very very for this is a total aside being on a very very early uh, radio <laughs> foray on community radio in like two thousand and eight I want to say mm-hmm. ride community radio two triple R eighty eight point five respect, uh, and it was the New South Wales state election and I was doing it with one of my um, dearest friends Tom Andrews and uh, um, 
and we'd been talking about how like talking about the language in state politics around like oh you've got to go out and um you got to you got to take a baseball bat with your vote you know what i mean like you want to take a baseball bat to the opposition or whoever it was or, or, or the government right you know you're gonna bring your baseball bat and like it, this guy he, tom andrews his dad's so funny paul and he, and he called he's got an english, english accent he called it, it was like baseball bat i got the message wrong i brought a fruit bat <laughs> 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 Too much a guy releasing a fruit bat <laughs> at an election. Uh, anyway, yeah. sorry about that. Um, okay, well let's let's talk about Usman Khawaja. Yep. Uh, we'll, I think we'll skip the, the Stokes declaration stuff because I think it turned out that it was completely fine in the end. But uh, Usman Khawaja scored his fifteenth Test ton on day two. He also became the second batter for Australia ever to bat in every day of a Test match. Um, the last guy in Test cricket to ever do that was actually Rory Burns um, four years ago. So it's not a maybe not a great stat. Uh, <laughs> harsh on Rory. Harsh on Rory. I think, I think, but I think there's a little drive by on RB yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, completely unnecessary. Um, Fruit bats. But uh, <laughs> I played with a couple of yeah. blokes who had a baseball bat in the showers. Um, <laughs> I played with a couple of fruit bats. Uh, I think there's only been like 13 guys ever to um, to bat in every day of a test, so that was nice. Uh, seventh test ton since being back in the side for Usman. Now hundreds in India, Pakistan and England. There's a great redemption arc to this story for Usman because he was yeah. dropped in 2019 after the Headingley test match where mm. Ben Stokes does his thing. That wild celebration when he guided the ball down to a vacant third man region. And you can hear in the stump like he fucking screamed out yes as soon as he hit it. Because um, I think Cameron Green's yeah. actually a bit harder hearing. That's that's why I did it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and that's then right. He, you just wanted to run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on! Um, and then he threw his bat in the air uh, and then felt naked in the celebration. Didn't know what to do with his hands. Uh, relatable content there. But, uh, I mean, fuck for Usman. 206 games, 206 runs in the match, 65 in the second innings. I think he faced 19,500 balls in the mm. match. He batted for a week and a half. Um, he is player of the match. He is a fucking hero. Um, not Ollie Robinson's finest moment, uh, I would suggest, during that game by sledging him, but just we'll get that in a second. But uh, but Usman um, has been nothing short of fucking heroic for Australia. Even before he was dropped, he played innings which saved test matches for Australia. And this this uh, this level of batting, high skill, to do it in three different continents, four if you include Australia, I suppose, um, fucking awesome. Yeah, and like, it would be easy to look at it in isolation and go, okay... It, these won't be the most challenging surface conditions that uh, he'll have faced. It was a dead track and slow, uh, mm -hmm. w which means that relative to like other test matches against high quality opposition, you're not going to have as many, a higher proportion of balls th that are extremely difficult to play. But you only have to look at the fact that around him, n none of Warner, Labuschagne or Smith could make an impact on the game. That speaks to, I think, the pressure of the Ashes in a first test mm -hmm. at that particular venue. Uh, Kawaja brought uh, a, a lot of concerns, I think, to these Ashes in terms of his record in England. I was worried, yeah. Yeah. I, and, uh, yeah. A, and not only that, he couldn't make an impression in the World Test Championship final, mm. um, mainly because of the jumper he wore. Uh, <laughs> which was... <laughs> But, um, I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's funny how we forget yeah. these things, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone scores yeah. runs and I'm fucking MIB, you know, yeah. like just give me that <laughs> yeah, memory thing. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so against that backdrop and the the general pressure and hype around a first Ashes test, the, uh, the, the you know, the how in your face Ben Stokes's captaincy tactics are, you know, like a, as anyone who's batted at it, decent level would know that when when a captain is really proactive with field settings and plans uh, essentially trying to tell you where they think your weakness is all the time uh like that can get in people's heads and i think it got in some of the aussies heads you know like mm -hmm. so he showed remarkable um what's the word like it's not it wasn't just resilience but me mental fortitude which is not something that you immediately associate with usman kawaja uh, because our image of mental fortitude in Australia looks different to that and it sounds different to that, you know, but it's actually it's actually not, you know. He's uh, uh, he's obviously an extremely resilient person and uh, he saw through all of the, the magic tricks of Stokes' captaincy mm -hmm. to just be unruffled, unflustered, mm -hmm. calm, and uh, he basically laid just 
absolutely critical platforms for Australia to get themselves eventually over the line. Can I tell you how I feel about the Ollie Robinson sledging thing? Yeah, please. So yeah. Uh, I'm sure people who, look, who are listening to Let me guess. It, let, 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 let me guess. Like, it's all just part of the sort of the theatre theater of it, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he, like, it's just sort of it's part of the, the rough and tumble of it, right? So in that moment of the game, Quaj is on 141, uh, some funky fields, and Ollie Robinson takes, in that moment, a very, very big wicket. And he runs down the wicket and he screams to Kawaja, fuck off, you fucking prick. Can we get into, into, into the, um, the minutiae of that? I think, he's, I think he says, fuck off, like, to Kawaja. And yeah. then he's embraced by his yeah. team and he's looking away. Yeah, he's looking and away. He says, and he says, like, fucking like prick. prick. yeah. Uh, and to me, there's something, like, just, I'm, I'm not um, defending yeah, sorry, him, yes. by the way. No, that's, that, that, that's I've that, seen that, guys that's, call that's someone correct. a fucking prick and looking at them saying yeah, 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 I do yeah. think there's a slight difference. Yes, he's I saying agree. fucking prick as he's looking away. Yeah, it's almost a throw, when almost like, throw away. The, when you've got your mates around you and the batter's kind of leaving mm. and, like, you might... You're kind of saying it to your mates yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. right? No, yeah, I, 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 I got I a lot. I got a lot. I want to say about Robinson too. Yeah, but sure, sure, sure. Just to get it right. I think like my personal thing is like I, giving someone a send off. Absolutely zero problems with that for, for me personally. Just like whatever. The 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 richness of the context is that the guy's on a fucking 141, and it's Usman Khawaja who's never said anyone to anything in his mm-hmm. life. So mm-hmm. like it just so so that part is that part's already ridiculous. So. You know, we're getting into like some water battery, and obviously Ollie Robertson there's done some water battery. Well, we've all seen Ricky Ponting do it, you know, uh, and then Ponting says, you know, well, I haven't played in 11 He's years. He's got a long memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't played <laughs> in 15 years. He fucking side-mouthed and, yeah. him hard. Yeah. Anyway, I think, like, send, sending someone off, like, all good, like, but don't take away the right to then us, but us be then, like, you, you're a knob. Exactly. Like, you're a knob. Now, like, I don't know Ollie Robertson. I've never had a conversation with him. I don't even know anyone that does know him. But, like, I, so I don't know what he's like as a bloke. But like, if you're going to carry on like that, people are going to think you're a knob, and mm. and like, and so, and because you're doing knobbish things, mm. I would also say that like, but you won't, but I won't. But what I would be saying, yeah, if, if, I, recorded, if I was talking, if I was talking, which as we know, I am I'm not, not. Yeah. I'm not even here, and you're my imaginary friend. <laughs> <laughs> if it were me, and I had the history of Ollie Robinson's suspension yeah. for those reasons, yeah. and I was going to say something, and I was going to say something, I would be. I would think really long and hard about the target of my sledging and send-offs. Oh. I, I, I think the optics of that are... Uh, 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 curious. curious. Interesting. They are, uh, some uh, would wor- say, worthy of reflection. <laughs> I, would yeah. be, I would be reflecting on my behaviour yeah. and my need to do that to that person. And that Exclusively. Now, Exclusively? that's the thing. I didn't see him say anything to anyone else. Now, Kawaja has been batting for a week and a half in this game. He takes a big wicket in the context of the match. He's allowed to send him off. That's all, like, whatever. I just, then there's a second innings thing where he walks, walks towards him um, after tea, and then it's just all a bit like, mate, if you've got a rap sheet of, like, some, uh, some you know, some racist gear, I, I, if it were me, I would just be very careful about fucking tiptoeing down that line again. Now, like, again, send-offs, all good. But, like, people defending him being like, well, Aussie's all of a sudden very sensitive. No, like, you can't like, take away our right to call someone a knob if he's being a knob. Yeah. So, that's how I feel about it. Is that, uh, no, I, I, I totally agree. It's like... And he bowls 125s. He bowls 125 <laughs> powder puffs, not, not, not too much quicker than his, the stuff he's bowling at Adelaide. He, 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 ain't, he ain't playing again in Australia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, I, I, he's, he's I, a good bowler. He's I good totally bowler. hear Okay, bowler, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just slow and ineffectual. You, know, you, you, you should yeah. back up your sledging. Well, I thought it, I thought it was good when people like started to send uh, send in his stats against Australia yeah. to defend the sledging. Yeah. Okay. I, I mate, I just I just echo that. It's like yeah, cool. Like uh, you're no, nobody's like denying your freedom of speech. No nah, man, no. Nah. I just there's just a freedom of reply. Yeah, That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, people are not going to really take to Aussies um, lecturing on the. The morals of when sledging is and isn't oh, okay, and, and rightfully so. But like, there, yeah. there, there actually, is, I'm not saying there's a code around it, but like mm. there is, there is kind of like a etiquette a little bit, or, or even if you're going to be a coat, like generally speaking, if you're if you're sending someone who's made 141, <laughs> like uh, off your bowling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like <laughs> generally bowled. speaking, it's yeah. it's not a very powerful send off if yeah. someone's leaving with 141 next to their name, mm. one. So I'm not sure it reflects well on. Uh, the, the old bonce there mm. uh, and then he's allowed to defend himself and say no I'm fine to do it and then yeah like others are allowed to go yeah you sound like a knob yeah that's it then then, then we just that's it then, and we, then we play on and then we just you know? play the second and third and fourth thing, and fifth test just think that thing about you you know yeah uh, curiously uh, 
when I say somebody told me this, I think we had that many beers. I can't, I genuinely can't remember who mm. told me this. Mm. Uh, but um, so there's a higher level of integrity in this journalism. But uh, yeah. it has been, someone told me that um, he is the appointed sledger of, right, of right, this right. English side. So um, uh, I don't know. I find, <laughs> I don't know. I find that weird. I don't, like, the, the guy doesn't strike me as uh, intimidating, but I suppose. People would say the same thing about Nathan Lyon as well, you know, who's yeah. kind of played that role. Yeah. Uh, I just, I can't remember a time when whoever was the um, appointed attack dog mm. has like, I don't know, has, has ever finished off looking good. Like once you're then known as the attack dog, a lot of the opposition then know that that's who you are and there's more, you bring more pressure on yourself. Now when you're bowling sort of 122s to 126. <laughs> uh, there's uh, there's, there's, a, there's st- a lot of away series which and, will be ineffectual. And you're sending blokes who made 141. And not only that, that bloke is the nicest guy yeah. in, in like almost world cricket Yeah, uh, who has got no record of sledging anybody else. Like you're just not going to, that, that's just bad PR. Mm. It's just bad PR. I, like, I, know, and I, I, know. I don't see the Aussies going like, Oh fuck, you know, oh, fake, oh, mate, up. Ollie Robinson's no, fired up. No. You see him? He's fucking mate. That's coming in the 127s <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'll tell you what, like if you're yeah. him, like if you're him, you're like, any danger of a blade of grass on this deck because yeah, I'm fucking yeah, battling yeah, yeah. here. Oh, no, you know what I mean? Like, there, boys. Is there a pink test coming yeah. up? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, that's all. I, uh, I I think as well, like from a fan's perspective, I, I'm in the same way that when Dave Warner was like carrying on that his worst years, a lot of the Australians, I would say a lot more than half were like, that and is, they, and they, they need a lot of runs. That's such an important point. Like when, the, when the Aussies do it, it's never been good. It's, oh, it's and, and, and I'd say, Australians are the ones. Australians are the fucking world policers of cricket. Yeah, like, that's I mean, right. Yeah, Australians, yeah, Australians yeah. police their own team's behaviour yeah. more than anything. Like the fact that what's had to happen with Pat Cummins and McDonald here now, yeah. and the wokeness of it all in yeah. commas, that's had to happen because the yeah. Australian public fucking melted down. Sandpaper was an effective like. It wasn't. A, it was. It was a sledgehammer that broke the camel's mm. back. It was like mm. this is. This has got to stop. It's ridiculous. Mm. And the car, you know, so like no one polices the the team's behaviour more than Australians. Mm. But um, you know, in the, like and but to but to that end, a lot of English fans, I'm sure, will be like Ollie Robinson, not for me. He's going to need a hell of a lot of wickets, and a lot of guys have got to defend their guy, and that's all good, you know. Like it's like when you know Stuart Broyd says the avoid the series stuff, you know, and obviously we're rattled and we're still thinking about it. But like mm. you've got to defend your guy, all good. At the same time, we're going to be like. Oh, what's he like as a bloke? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're gonna go it's see you're gonna go see a doctor to see if you've had a stroke or got Bell's <laughs> give, palsy. Give me crow's feet. Or whether you need a dermatologist for your crow's feet. <laughs> Can I get some prescription Nivea doc? Right. Give me crow's feet. I look like I'm sixty five. Is that night cream or does it have, does it have UV fifty plus in it? <laughs> that's the only one that's proven to help with aging. <laughs> you gotta get I've that done sunscreen. A lot of research in online. It. Sunscreen is the only provable one. Uh, <laughs> for crow's feet. <laughs> um, okay, should we talk about? Do we? Is there anything else to talk about the game itself? I mean, Australia chased two eighty one. That's that's I'm, the highest I'm score. I'm sure there is heaps to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah. But, so uh, uh, as Pez mentioned bad. before, that's the first time. That's the highest score since nineteen forty eight when Australia chased four hundred and four. That was a Brad. That's the Invincibles team. Uh, I think that's got four hundred and four in a day to chase that. Uh, Bradman scored also some runs. Also, ball. Um, they call it Brad ball back then. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about where to now, mate. It's it's eight days, or it's now seven days until the Lords Test match. They're getting an eight day break. Um, but I like that. Uh, I like that there's already been a few questions. Uh, oh, of course. Been, I mean, Eng- England could very, very easily be one off in the series. But I like that people are turning on the team. They need they need about four or five changes. I would have thought. Um, Bearso needs to open. How do you get folks in? Does my Wayne Alley play? Uh, I've got pissy fingers. What's what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Good call. Uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they retained the same top seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there will be a question over whether a specialist keeper should come in for Bearstow, who missed some very important moments. Uh, you balance that out with what he offers with the bat, and uh, he's pretty important with the bat to them. He's, he's, his first innings was, was quality. He was mm-hmm. looking good in the second innings as well. Uh, I, I, I don't know. My guess with baseball because I get it. Obviously, yeah, uh, you've already figured it out. Yeah, I've figured it out. Mm. Is that they'll just back their guy and they'll back Besto to improve with the gloves. That's probably the simplest option for them. However, if you were looking at how you include both folks and Besto, Crawley's now scored runs, so it'd, it'd be you know duck it in the gun. 
mm. uh, despite him having scored like 15,000 hundreds in the last couple of games. Um, you know, it, it's who, who opens out of that, or those guys instead of Duckett. I mean, for me, I, I, it might even be best though, you know, with the way that they... Uh, with the way that they're bad, he's opened in one-day cricket. He opens in T20 cricket. They're basically playing one-day cricket. Mm. Uh, you know, that might be a simple way to do it. But I think they're probably going to stick with the top seven. And then what makes up the rest after that, eight to 11, it all depends how they how they come up. I mean, I think it's very clear that Mark Wood, who I, I believe was fit for this game, will yeah. come into the side. Yes. I don't know who for. James Anderson seemed to have problems bowling. Yeah, uh, he was. He, was only, he only took one wicket in the game. Obviously, he yeah. didn't take the second new ball when Australia were um, right at, towards the end of that innings when mm. they were about to win. He seemed he seemed to struggle with the foot marks all day. Yeah. There's some conjecture about how fit he is having uh, done his groin before the Ireland game. Mm. There's obviously probably a fitness question there in terms of having not done much bowling at all because mm. no one plays test cricket anymore. Um, let me just... Uh, interested in that, mate, because I think, I think this will be a factor as the series goes on with five tests in five weeks. Australia bowled... 78 and 66 overs. That's 144 overs in the game. Lion bowled 54 of those. So the seamers haven't bowled that much, but they obviously bowled last week in the World Test mm. Championship final. England bowled 116 and 92. That's 208. So they bowled 64 more overs in Australia. Spin bowled 62 of those overs, um, but only Stuart Broad, Stuart Broad played the game against Ireland, so a little bit fresh up. But I think that will be a factor over the course of time. If Australia just could keep batting longer and longer and longer, by the end of the series, I think that will play a factor. Um, so to that end, I think that's the big question. Who does Mark Wood come in for? Broad was the best bowler. Um, I thought Robinson bowled okay. Uh, he bowled okay. Uh, he's, he's obviously very good in England. I think Wokes is in the squad. His record at Lords is fucking unbelievable. There's obviously strength in the batting there as well. No one knows about Moeen Ali. He... he, he didn't really bowl well. He bowled poorly, really, in the second innings. Um, in the fourth innings of the match, he's he got bowled, a, he's got he, a couple of seeds in him. He, he he's bowled, got he a, he's a, got a, he seed. a good ball to Travis said. It, it was to Cam Green. Yeah, good. He's got he, he bowled Cameron Green in the first uh, innings. Yeah, yeah he did. Through, through but that, but that was before he fucking split his finger. Open. Yeah. Well, you have to presume that he, unless his finger heals, he's not going to play. Yeah. Uh. So, and I'm not even sure we got to the um very bottom of the the nature of that injury. We just pre- we just presumed it was skin coming off mm. the finger. Uh, I, I don't, I mean, usually it takes a few bowls, you know, to, to, to coarsen it up. Mm. Uh, Stokes, you know, used him heavily in that first inning. Also, Stokes isn't fit. Stokes, 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 Stokes is Stokes, wheelchairing Stokes, himself yeah. in there. I mean, he, he's on crutches he's, coming he's in the He's basically got one big, sp- I mean, but, the, you know, he gets Smith out in the first innings. He also yeah. takes the huge wicket of Kwaja. I mean, he's just, he, he may be the most clutch cricket of all time. Yeah, yes, yeah. hello, India, MS Stone, he's good as well. Calm yeah. down. But um, Stokes is the new captain of CSK. <laughs> um, Michael Bevan for me. Um, anyway, uh, y- you know he, he's he's not he's not giving you spells. He's he's not mm. giving you spells, Stokes. I mean, he's he's basically got a, a three or four over stint in him where he can where he often does something amazing, and there's not much after that. Yep, uh, they've 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 got problems there with the bowling, uh, and be curious to see what deck they order in, because mm. uh, I'm not sure another fast flat one will be appreciated uh, by. I mean, maybe well, if, there's pace pace. In it, if there's pace in yeah, it. Yeah, but they don't have mm. heap of pace. You know, I mean, but I suppose with, with Wood, they've got some pace. Um, in fact, loads of but it. But I mean, like, in terms of the pace in the wicket, you know, like, yeah. I mean, th- there was, I mean, they, they've they just overcooked Edge Baston here, really. That's that's what happened, right? I'll tell you so, f- but, you know, fast and flat, as opposed to slow and flat, like, fast and flat. Well, it's sort of suits the Australians good, a little bit. It's good for Australia. Mm. I feel like slow and flat were, was to England's advantage. Like, I saw Jerno saying that it really, uh, it really sold their bowlers short. Well, Nathan, like, Nathan Lyon's a better bowler than what England have got. Yeah, they yeah. take eight wickets in the game. They have a problem in, in the spin department, particularly mm. if like, if Moen doesn't come up. I mean, even when he bowled in that first innings, he did take it, like one or two important wickets, but um, he also got pumped. Mm. Uh, so, you know, if, if they go away from Moeen, who uh, is 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 that when they get into Liam Dawson areas? I mean, is, is Joe Root going to be the frontline spinner? That mm. feels like... That would be quite a dramatic thing. It's a lot of workload for him as well, because he's, he's batting so important. Like, yeah. if he's now got to bowl sort of you know, fifty overs in a test. But I suppose all we know is that, like, um, this is the longest turnaround between tests. I think second longest. There's there's a, there's a whole week off uh, for, for the between. But this is four a week and two, five, right? Three and five. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. So maybe it's enough time for Broad and Anderson to get up as well. You'd imagine Broad will play again, but uh, mm. but you know, Wood Wood will come in. For someone, so he'll come in for one of yes. Broader Anderson. Yes. I guess, I'm guessing it'd be Anderson. I don't mm. know. Uh, and then they've got a spin bowling question, so we could see two changes to the bowling mm. attack, mm. Um, which, which is interesting. Um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if Australia picked the same team mm. as as they have this time because I mean, yeah. so but they've already played two tests in two weeks, obviously, uh, and yeah. both of those games have gone all. I five think they'll days. rotate. So this, yeah, this we've got an eight day break, obviously, between the games. Um, but they may be tempted to go again because if if they feel like that this is the best team to take down Basball or just England generally, then they might be tempted to be like, well, if we can get Lords done, then it's two 0 up. Um, and that's obviously just an enormous advantage. But, um, I mean, Stark is the obvious one. Um, it's funny we Stark, though. Lower order runs are just fucking crucial in England. Like, this is the thing with Stark. It, uh, as it, with this 1-0 victory, and if, you know, this is a big if, but, like, if Australia can create more time pressure for England, where they've got to actually bat even more recklessly to kind of keep the game going on a fast, flat wicket, Australia could bat two days on a deck like that. Mm. You know, Stark Stark might be a calculated risk for Australia. You know, to like actually knock them over uh, well, as, as they make mistakes. England scored a lot of low order runs where Stark would have come in. I mean, so in the in the third innings of the game, yeah. England were eight for two twenty eight, the yeah. lead of two thirty five, and they end up getting they end up making an extra forty runs from there. Now, mm. so you fancy Stark coming into bowling to Broad and Anderson mm. and two bats nine for them, um, Robinson mm. and even Moen Ali at eight. Just with that left-hander to left-hander action, like I mean, that that is a factor. Plus, his batting is better than Boland, Lyon, and mm. Hazelwood. Boland batted well second innings, and he's probably well. you know Stark's batting has actually probably been better than Cummins has mm. been for mm. five years. Cummins Cummins scores of forty four not mm. out and forty are his highest, his two highest scores in five years. Yeah, uh, that's from Bredick who who tweeted that. Um, Apparently, he had a big net before the day. Big old net. He had a net. A couple a of net. throwdowns. Oh, just, a lot of journalists reporting that as well. Just went to the indoor center and just had a good net, and he was happy. <laughs> you know what, what I wouldn't give. Oh, that, that's just grade cricket all over. I mean, yeah. I had a net. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make forty. How'd you hit him? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah really good. Just yeah. ball machines hit like it. Yeah. So, anyway. but you think they rotate? Yeah, because I, I, I think it's so a five test series, and I think it's a. Uh, I think Cummins might play every game if he's fit. And I think they need. Yeah, so him, I think I think that's why he didn't play in the IPL. Yeah, but, but, but uh, I I I think that that will be part of their long term plan, and they'll try and again be um, just conscious not to cook bowlers and to ensure that there's some freshness there. I wonder if, if they can. I wonder if sorry. I wonder if Hazelwood. Um, they might be uh, like cautious with Hazelwood having not played two tests. Yeah, right, maybe a long time. he bowled quite well too. He did bowl well. Hoff. The yeah, horse? He did, but well, he seems to be quite a good bowler. So Yeah, um, doesn't he? It's, um, it's almost like he's taking 250 poles into his <laughs> cricket at 25. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be quite a good bowler. <laughs> yeah. I like the look of him. <laughs> seems to be ready for this level. <laughs> um, anything else in the game? Oh, God. Uh, uh, no, nah, I, 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 that's about as good as we can do for a breakdown. But, uh, um, um, yeah, I'm like I'm working out a million scenarios about how Australia wins these Ashes. I I still I, I feel like winning three is going to be tough going, but um, being one up puts more pressure on England's style of cricket, especially if in the next game Australia can uh, bat big somehow in that first innings. You know, mm-hmm. that the, the pressure that that applies then to England's one-dimensional style is uh, is might might be really telling. But at the end of the day, like you know, it's a five-part series and we've had one. Uh, yeah. So it's it's early days. I think any sort of uh, defeatism from England is is unwarranted because yeah. I mean England England were ahead of the game definitely from days two until basically the last hour hour of mm. day five. Mm. I mean day one a bit harder to say um, with the declaration the flat deck and stuff. But um, but I mean yeah England England are a very Good team all of a sudden now uh, in the past 12 months. And uh, they've got good players. They've got match winners everywhere. And the captain's fucking really good. So, um, I don't know. Should we talk about the women's Ashes, which starts Please. tomorrow, Pez? Uh, tomorrow Looking forward to bossing this too. It being it being Wednesday afternoon. So, Australia actually got 2 nil up uh, after this one. Right. Um, multi-format. I like multi-format. So, the, the the test match of the seven-game Ashes series starts tomorrow in Nottingham at Trent Bridge. We are recording this on Wednesday afternoon. Um, so Thursday morning UK time, Thursday evening, Thursday 8 p.m. Uh, back home in Australia in the Eastern States um, for the Test match to start. Um, so for the warm-up games here, Australia played against England A in Leicester, and then England played against Australia A in Derby. So I'll, I'll start with Australia against Australia. Uh, Australia oh, against England, eh? 1994 95. What a game. <laughs> I'm happy. Everyone's amazing. <laughs> we'll dominate forever. Things will never change. Um, 
So Australia made 284 in that game. Beth Mooney made 107 opening the batting. Inglenay finished 562 all out. Um, so Lauren Winfield Hill, not to be used with Lauren Hill, of course, uh, mm. made yeah, 106. I mean, that, that, I'd watch the shit out of that. Uh, Paige Schofield made 102. Bess Heath made 88. And then Australia made 371 for seven. Annabelle Sutherland scored 116 opening the batting. Phoebe Litchfield, who's going to make her test debut tomorrow, I think, made 78 as well. So it's just fucking runs everywhere. Even though England A made 562. Tali McGrath said it was perfect prep. Yeah. So that's fucking alpha. Yeah, that, that's very alpha. <laughs> Tali McGrath's the new vice captain, obviously. That's right. Meg Lanning is not captaining. So Elisa Healy, who's going to drop down the order for Australia, is captaining. But uh, so Tali McGrath, a bit of extra responsibility, saying, yeah, perfect prep. Yeah, and I'm fucking, I'm fucking Steve Warren the shit out of that, like yeah. a tip, tip of approval. Get well, that's, that's where that's that's where they are, the women's team. They're they're in their, like the Steve War 2002 phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing that like that threatens them is just getting tired of winning. You know, <laughs> which is what Donald Trump said about being president. <laughs> that's uh, right. I'm not sure how it's going for him, um, but uh, yeah, the, I mean, I think I think Australia's depth should be too much. Uh, I'm looking forward to Phoebe Litchfield debuting. Uh, she's an absolute gun um i'll always remember phoebe litchfield because i saw some footage of her batting in the nets yeah. uh on twitter and i think i wrote uh, some praise about yeah, that that's right. once and um most of the replies were that that made me a pedophile <laughs> so um <laughs> now, that, so, now that she's 18 looking forward to watching on television I mean, and making age appropriate comments yeah yeah, yeah. It's something cricket australia has to take into account if they're gonna <laughs> if they're gonna be promoting these <laughs> <laughs> underage players like yes, right. yeah. the men can't get involved nah. because they just like so many people <laughs> want to talk about it but they just don't want to be called a nonce you know <laughs> no that's i don't know no. i don't know how that's landing but um she she's an she's an absolute gun uh australian team still looks extremely strong yep uh Elisa Healy skipper now batting down the order. That's that's something new for the eyes, I suppose, in terms of looking at the order and what's mm. what's occurring. And some and some safety coming into bat as well. Yeah, you know, well, if, yeah. It, if it is sort of three for spit. Yeah. Uh, then you know you, then you sort of like you know, Elisa Healy comes in. You go, well, everything's okay. Yeah, everything's okay. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I but, but, but I mean I I just retain the same line as I've retained for all of Australian women's cricket for the last mm. five to ten years, mm. which is that like a, anything other than a, f- a maximum points victory is mm. effigies. Effigies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that's right. Um, complete domination. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Which is a compl- which is a compliment. It's a compliment. Yeah. Complete destruction of the opposition. Yeah. If England um even even share Dare? a session. Yeah. If 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 Australia don't win every session of the yeah. Ashes, I'm 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 not even here. I'm off them. Lit- Litchfield needs a hundred uh in her first game, yes. otherwise we're having a look around. Preferably before lunch. <laughs> 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 um, so we should say as well, we've been doing stuff uh, for the BBC Sport yes. um, uh, during the Ashes, and we're going to be doing that right through the, the, the men's Ashes, but also a couple of pieces for um, the women's Ashes as well. Um, so we'll be doing something tomorrow at the end of the day's play, which you can find on the BBC Sport website um, on, the, on the morning of day two, I suppose. We're reviewing uh, day one of the Test match and also when the T20s come around, I think it is. Um, so yeah, it's been cool to, to, to do that. And also we've been doing... Um, uh, we were on TMS yesterday. We were on Test Match Special yesterday. That, yeah. was, that was cool to talk to Isha Gua um, about, uh, about the cricket and some other stuff, I suppose. I can't remember anything that happened because I <laughs> have a problem. Um, just in the other game, the other warm-up game, when England played our Australia A, yes. uh, Tammy Beaumont scored a double hundred. Uh, she retired on 201 of 238, and England scored 510 in a day. Uh, they finished 611 for seven. Uh, that was in response to Australia A's 221. Only Jess Jonathan, uh, who captains Australia A, played, uh, who's like using the first team for Australia. Um, but she scored some runs as well in the second. 107, third 73 red. So, okay, they, so they, 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 runs they, everywhere. Well, yeah. they dropped they 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 dropped her into the possibles team just to help them out. <laughs> yeah, and she's yeah. gone fuck that. <laughs> Just spoke, just yeah. send, just send a message to her charges. Like, yeah, that's this, right. This is how this is how you yeah. get it done. And I want nothing less. She needed she and she needed those runs. Yeah, why? Well, oh, because she wasn't in the senior team. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, oh go, okay, go, yeah, yeah. Go and help, go and help out the, go and help, the, out. Go and help out as LCA. a bit of a, a, a shot yeah. across the bows. I'm not saying they were sending a message to her. It was like, oh, go, go, go and go and hold their well, hands. Well, the horse's head in the bed was. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, eh? 
Don't ever put me in this yeah. team again. Was it was it one seventy three red? Yeah, red. Okay, so she went safety. red. Yeah. Safety, yeah, she went red. She yeah, went yeah red. safety, safety. Um, okay, well, the, as as we say, the women's test, si- uh, the women's Ashes <laughs> starts tomorrow. The test match of that seven game series starts tomorrow, eight p.m. Australian time, and the Eastern States. I suppose that means it's uh, five p.m. in Perth, uh, prime time to get a couple of sessions in for the test match. Um, and yeah, so that's gonna be Australia sixteen nil. In that series, um, before we get into hashtag RCDC, Pez, uh, I want to give a shout out to Shane Watson's book, "Winning the Inner Battle." We can get from if you're watching Shane. on YouTube. That's the uh, that's the aesthetic of that bad boy. And if you can see the back, he's in his CSK kit. Mm, uh, it's, it's a thick trunk too. ShaneWatson.au is where you can buy "Winning the Inner Battle." You can buy it on paperback, audiobook, or ebook. You can buy it from anywhere in the world, and I know that for a fact because I was just on the website before, and you, it gets presented to you in UK pounds, in sterling, if you will, and I know that you will. Brett Lee says, simple process to be able to use in all aspects of life. Not sure if uh, if what I appreciate is being just saying it's just simple, very simple, Jork. Just a couple of sentences from the book here as well. He goes, then there's the direction of your focus. Is it external? Am I interacting with my environment around me or is it internal? Am I inside my own head working through something? Answer that. <laughs> Five nil, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many, it's too many. When, when no, one, no one's ever scored this many <laughs> runs. Turn away, he goes. <laughs> Head up the stairs. That's shamewatson.au where you can get winning the inner battle on paperback, audiobook or ebook. Let's uh, let, let's just have a quick shout out as well. He goes, uh, I know we mentioned off the top, but Budgie Smuggler, just these guys have been getting behind us for, for this UK summer. Yeah. Uh, a, a wonderful partnership, as everybody knows. Uh, Summer is here. I know we often mention Budgie Smuggler as uh, a swimwear brand, uh, but they do way more than that. Uh, party sh- They're going deluxe on party well, shirts summer's here, baby. this time around. They've actually sent us some as well, which we're meant to pick up at some point in the next couple of days, which we will uh, uh, be rocking. And guess what else they have here, guys? They have a bucket hat range. Oh, you know who likes bucket hats? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. It, well, all of England. 40-year-old apparently. Jimmy Anderson. <laughs> Uh, so, beyond your swimwear, which is uh, which obviously excellent, made in Australia, uh, popular everywhere, you can also get your party shirts, you can get your bucket hats. Uh, summer yeah. of smuggling yeah. is here. Smuggling yeah. goes beyond what you put over your jocks or whatever you call your uh, your areas down there. <laughs> um, <laughs> use the code good areas for free shipping. Indeed, use the code good areas for free shipping at budgiesmuggler.com.au. Hashtag RCSC. Trent says, Pez. What was it like seeing Athers, Ward, and NASA in the flesh with their suits, chinos, and boat shoes? Was there a little wiggle downstairs? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, f- for those who are tuning in f- for the first time, uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago, I made very clear my proclivity for um, you know the 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 style of uh, the aesthetic. Uh, and spiritual style of the English uh, cricket commentariat, uh, mm-hmm. the, the gentry, the the beautiful wool suits, uh, the the a, a, a chino fitted just so, mm. a watch fitted just so, even just uh, Athers glasses, just Gla- picking up the top, y- yeah, glasses yeah. picking up at yeah, just, picking, just, up, yeah, just picking the out the top, there. yeah, indeed, um, an, an extra button undone beneath the collar as well. Yeah, just says, oh, you know like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm only a couple of buttons away, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but enough to be dignified. Uh, and I can I can score uh, seven thousand test runs and make you see sights you've never seen before. And that's on and that's just on TV, you mm, know. Mm. Uh, in 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 the flesh, Behind closed it's doors. it's full 3D, baby. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm full It smells amazing. Uh, I was actually on. Um, I was getting a coffee downstairs and I was on FaceTime to my uncle uh, who had n- no idea that I was in England. Uh, and um, at that moment in time, uh, 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 English uh, cricket media manager Danny Rubin walked past and said, oh, hi, Sam. And I just took my face off the FaceTime camera and said, oh, hey, d- hey Danny. And Athos was behind him. He said, he said hello, Samuel, and, and poked me <laughs> in my stomach. Uh, he like got his forefinger and he, he nearly lost it in there. Believe me, uh, we are. I have got the Heathrow injection over here. But uh, hello, Samuel, and pokes me right in there. <laughs> and I, and uh, my uncle didn't believe me. He, he, he was like, "Oh, sorry, that that was Athos showed him his back." He's like, "He's like, where the fuck are you?" <laughs> 
Uh, no, I mean the 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 boys the boys look good. They always look good. The yeah. the English commentators, I respect it. They they um I, I love their entire production. I love the brains of it. I love the aesthetics of it. Uh, I'm just on top. I'm I'm across and aware mm. and around all of it. Yeah. Um, just just uh, just to finish off here, just uh, I think we've already said the top of the show, but just a reminder: there are live show tickets available. It's been awesome to be here. It was amazing to be here for the test match, of course, which was just one of the all-time greats. But just to see people that we haven't seen yeah. in four years to be back in Birmingham, and we're so excited to do Manchester tomorrow night, then Leeds, then obviously the runner shows in London. Um, first time since before COVID that we were out here, um, and it's just so exciting. And it just reminded me of um, so um, LJ. Uh, LJ messaged me the other day. Your girlfriend LJ. That's right. Yeah. She said uh, she said to me. I was at the hairdressers on Friday and some chick was sitting next to me banging on about how her boyfriend was obsessed with cricket. Her, and then and then he said, or she said, he even went to a cricket live show on Wednesday night. <laughs> and then LJ said, I was just sitting there like Homer Simpson's into the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're not alone, ladies. You're not alone. Uh, but you are alone, men out there. Uh, so come and come to our live shows. Uh, if you brought, I mean, you basically only got Leeds as an option now. I suppose there's a couple of tickets for Ali Pally. Ali Pally, forty. And, uh, and, yeah. there's, and there's and then, well, and then, then they'll be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a couple in Manchester, if they still even are. But uh, it's awesome to be here. It's awesome to uh, to see the sights and the sounds and the colours again of uh, of this fair country. Uh, and uh, yeah, one nil. Fuck off. <laughs>